we went to this one site where there's no signs, so it was like this wonderful thrill of getting to go somewhere that nobody's been to before. And since I come from more of an archaeology background, I went nuts. There was just pottery f for the last 1,200 years just lying on the ground. And we were all just going like, oh, 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 oh. And then we all kind of touched it. It was just a riot. It was great. The most memorable one was the Hopi trip. And I'll never forget meeting a guy named Joe, married to a Hopi woman. We were sitting in his home surrounded by these beautiful kachinas. And for the first time, I really understood how special it is to have kachinas made from native dyes. And I ended up buying this little cockabrill kachina. And it reminds me of the great spirituality of the Hopi and how they, when they pray for people, they pray for people all over the world, not just their immediate friends and family. And I also was very intrigued with the way they grow corn which is the same way they've been growing it for centuries. And I think we Anglos, especially in this world of climate change, have a lot that we can learn from them because these ancient ways of growing corn just make sense, especially for, with dry farming. What's interesting about my fellow travelers is that they've all had these great adventures and many of them have been to different parts of the world. It's just really fun to get to know people from all over the country and it always seems like there's a nice mix of men and women. So yeah, it's just a lot of neat people that are independent thinkers, but are also very tolerant of others' ideas and belief systems and everything. Nice, nice group.